Hey friends, welcome to another video. Today we are doing a long awaited winter reading wrap up. I have read quite a number of books over the last season, 47 to be exact, and I'm very excited to discuss them with you. Now, at some point during the last few months, I decided to start taking notes on the books I was reading because I have the memory of a goldfish, I barely remember anything <laughs> after I finished reading it, and I found that that really helped me. So for some of the books, I will be able to give you a lot of thoughts, but for some others, I might not remember. So I'm sorry, but I can at least give you a rating and general thoughts. As per usual, we are going to break it down into categories because that's what I like to do. So we've got DNFs, we've got fantasy, we've got fantasy romance, we've got straight up romance, we've got YA, that's not fantasy, we've got lit fic, we've got comics and graphic novels, and middle grade and picture books. So let's get started with the DNFs. So I had three DNFs over the past four months. Yeah, I think I haven't done a wrap up in four months. So the first one is not a forever DNF. It was just because I didn't have the physical copy and I tried listening to the audiobook, but it was, I just wasn't keeping up and I just knew I needed to wait for my physical copy to arrive and it did and it's stunning. So my first DNF that's not really a DNF is When the Moon Hatched by Sarah A. Parker. This is the absolutely stunning fairy loot edition. So I definitely am going to read this. I just need to read it with my eyeballs and not audiobook. Anyway, the second DNF I have was Killjoy by Holly Jackson. This is a little novella that takes place before the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series and this it's not a must read it's just like a fun little add-on thing that has no real impact on the actual story from the trilogy and there was no Ravi so I started reading it and I was just like I don't really care to be honest so yeah I didn't finish that and then the next book that I didn't finish is Carpe Jugulum by Terry Pratchett and this might just be a for now DNF but I have just not been in the mood for Discworld books. I might pick that up again at a later date when I feel like reading a Discworld novel. Okay moving on to fantasy. I'm so excited. My favorite genre and I had some new favorites. The first of which Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. If you've watched my media book freakout tag this was my favorite book of the year so far. I don't know if it still is but Oh my gosh, five stars. I t I've already talked about it so much in that video. It's just perfect. It's perfect. Absolutely love. And then I also read the sequel, Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands. And I didn't love this one as much as the first one. I felt as though this one, the plot was kind of all over the place a little bit. But I still really, really loved it. And I can't wait for the third book to come out next year. I gave that one a four stars. I still absolutely loved it. Then, oh my gosh, I feel like it's been so long since I read this book. The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrian Young. Do I remember anything about this book? <laughs> I don't. I don't even really remember. It's set in a small town and we're following June Farrow, whose mother disappeared when she was a baby, so she's been living with her grandmother ever since. It kind of involves like split timelines slash time travel very twisty turny very enjoyable i ended up giving it a four i really enjoyed it but as you can see it didn't leave the biggest impression on me but it was fun when i read it then we have one of my most disappointing books of the year and that is the girl who fell beneath the sea by axio i love axio i love korean stories i love korean storytelling but this just really fell short for me and i can't really put my finger on why. I just, I wasn't hooked. I wasn't obsessed with the writing. The characters didn't stand out to me that much. It was just a very meh story and I'm super sad about it because this is one of my favorite covers of all time. Oh, it's so beautiful. I ended up giving this a three stars. It was just so average for me and I'm so sad about it. Mm. But I'm probably gonna, um, yeah, put it on my Depop shop because I don't need a book that I didn't love. Next we have one of my biggest accomplishments, <laughs> A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon, a book I've been meaning to read ever since it came out because I loved The Priory of the Orange Tree so much and I adored this one as well but not quite as much as that one. Oh, I just really enjoy Samantha Shannon's characters and the growth of her characters throughout the story because obviously it's so long. The characters 
can obviously develop so much in that time. The plots of these are very hard to explain because they're so complex. Essentially, it's set in a world made up of multiple kingdoms, queendoms, and territories. They all have to sort of band together against this evil dragon called the Nameless One, who appears every 500 years. That's the essential plot. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. 4.5 stars. And last in my fantasy category, we have The Colliding Worlds of Mina Lee by Ellen O. Oh my gosh, I am absolutely obsessed with this. This is a perfect YA fantasy book. Perfect. And it does not surprise me because I read another Ellen O a couple of years ago. It was a middle grade though. Five stars. This one, five stars. Absolutely incredible. It follows Mina Lee who's decided to create her own webcomic. Something happens and she is suddenly transported into the world of her webcomic. And she finds that the webcomic is not panning out as she had personally planned it and things are like beyond her control and she's trying to figure out why, how, how is this happening. Also the love interest June is her childhood best friend who died when she was a kid. So she's also grappling with the fact that oh my gosh this is June, her best friend, and if she does find a way to get back to the real world that means leaving June forever. Oh my gosh it's so heart-wrenching, so beautiful, tackles so many themes. It is like, I was on the edge of my seat. I could not put it down. Five stars of the perfect YA novel. So underrated. Okay, moving on to fantasy romance. First, we have Bride by Ali Hazelwood. Another disappointing read for me. But what did I expect? I didn't love the love hypothesis. I don't know. I was just so curious because everyone was talking about this. So this is a romance between a werewolf and a vampire. And it just didn't really hit for me. And again, I read it so long ago, so I can't really remember. All I remember is I just wasn't obsessed and it was fine. So three stars. Sorry, I don't have more to say. Then we have Powerful and Reckless by Lauren Roberts. I don't know why I keep picking these up when I know they're not going to be good. <laughs> um, Powerless, yeah, I don't get the hype around this series at all. It's not well written. It's a carbon copy of so many other books. It's not original. I just don't get it. I don't get it. I gave Powerful three stars and this one 3.5. Like, I enjoyed it slightly more than the first book and I'll probably read the last book in the series, but I'm not holding on to these copies. Um, they can go because I'm not obsessed with this series in the slightest. Also, I do not understand the ending. How does that even make sense? Then we have another disappointing read and that is Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. I was expecting to fall head over heels in love with this fantasy romance because it's basically like set in Regency England but there's fairies in this world and our main character has been cursed by a fairy. Okay so I did write a couple of notes about this. I wrote that it was cute but I wasn't obsessed like I thought it I'd be. It felt kind of surface level to me but maybe that's because the main character has half a soul so she's lacking all of her emotions um, because she's been cursed by this fairy and I'm the type of person that needs a lot of emotion to really enjoy a book. Maybe that's why it felt really surface level for me but it was just fine. I'm kind of sad about it. I give it like a 3.5. Oh I did have notes for The Colliding Worlds of Mina Lee. I wrote, so fast and entertaining I read it in two sittings. It has an excellent portrayal of grief. Um, it has an unexpected ending, which was really interesting, um, but I found out that there's going to be a sequel, which is very exciting. Then I read The Love of My Afterlife by Christy Greenwood, and this was kindly sent to me by the publisher, Penguin Random House, maybe? Yes, Penguin Random House. Oh, and sorry, my battery died, but we're back. Um, I forgot to mention The Colliding Worlds of Mainly was also sent to me by Penguin Random House, which is so kind of them. But anyway, this is an adult romance with a sprinkle of fantasy thrown in. We're following our main character who chokes on a burger and dies, and she wakes up in the afterlife. And while she's processing that she's just died, a man pops up in the afterlife who has also just arrived and they have this instant connection and she's convinced that this man is her soulmate. But oopsie, it was a mistake. He was sent to the afterlife by mistake. It happens sometimes, he gets sent back. She's like, wait, but that's my soulmate. So she's given a second chance to live. If she can find this man within 10 days, 
Um, but the catch is that he doesn't remember their meeting at all. This was very fun. It has a very British sense of humour. It was a very interesting premise, but I wasn't hooked for some reason. Um, I did like the romance though. I It was predictable where it was going to go, but I thought it was really cute. But other than that, it was just okay for me. Um, so yeah, I gave this a 3.5. It was good. Okay, moving on to romance. There is um, actually a lot. Yeah, I read a lot of romance this past few months. So first, we have a couple of disappointing reads. <laughs> But then, then a few amazing five star reads. So first we have Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake, a book that I thought I was gonna absolutely adore, but I just ended up thinking it was okay. Again, I read it so long ago that I can't really remember why. I just didn't really vibe with it that much. I'm pretty sure it had a miscommunication and third act breakup, which is my main gripe with romances. If a romance can pull off not having miscommunication and a third act breakup, it's probably gonna get a five stars, but this just got a three from me. Oh, we're moving on to the second shelf. Okay. Next we have Spoiler Alert by Olivia Day. This was not that great. I didn't love the writing. It was a little bit cringy. And again, miscommunication. I hate the trope of lying, like almost catfishing. <laughs> I hate that trope. So these two characters have been communicating online for the longest time because they both write fan fiction. But at the start, neither of them know who the other one is in real life. Um, sometime uh, towards the like first 25% maybe, she figures out who he is, but doesn't tell him. And I hate that trope. I hate secrecy, lying about identities. I don't like it. I did like the plus size rep. That was good, but other than that, it was just okay. Three stars. Another three star romance that I thought I was gonna love, Written in the Stars by Alexandra Belfleur. <sighs> Again, do I remember why? No. No, I don't. Because at this point, all of these romances were just the same thing over and over again. Um, honestly, nothing special except that it's queer. I don't remember anything else. I'm sorry, but I, I gave it three stars. And this is why I need to take notes, friends. Okay, now we're getting into the, the juicy bits. Okay, I read almost all of Abby Jimenez's backlist. So I read The Friend Zone, The Happy Ever After Playlist, Life's Too Short, Part of Your World, and Yours Truly. And I absolutely fell in love. I didn't give any of these a full five stars, but spoiler alert, just for the summer I just finished and that's definitely a five stars. But I did fall in love with her writing and her characters and a lot of other things. So let's go through them. So firstly, The Friend Zone. This is definitely one of my favorites of the stack, probably in my top three. I just absolutely loved the characters by themselves and also together their chemistry was unbelievable, like off the charts could feel it through the pages. So this is essentially about two people who meet and have an instant connection, but she finds out that he wants a huge family. He grew up in a huge family himself and he wants a ton of kids. She's been told her whole life that she's not gonna be able to have kids because she has severe en endometriosis, is that what's called? So she's like trying to push him away, being like, I'm not right for you. You need to find someone else, but they can't deny their like unbelievable chemistry and he's like what are you talking about we're obviously soulmates and yeah a lot happens I can understand why some people might not like or vibe with this book because it does have like borderline cheating and there's something that happens at the end which rubs some people the wrong way but if you read the author's note you can kind of understand why she did that. Very, very emotional. Um, yeah, it's almost a perfect book for me, except this had the trope of withholding information because obviously she was keeping this ginormous secret from him. Why couldn't she just tell him? And they could work through it, you know? Annoying. But anyway, I gave this one a 4.5. Loved this one. Moving on to the next book in that first little trilogy we have the happy ever after playlist and can i just say i love how every single one of her books has a dog it was so nice seeing the characters from the friend zone again in this book because if you didn't know all of abby jimenez's books are connected so while you can read them as standalones i highly highly recommend reading them in the order that I'm talking about them to you because you will get so much more out of it, especially 
when you read just for the summer and everything is connected. Um, anyway, this one is very emotional. It deals a lot with grief because the main female character lost her fiance. And this is her not only finding love again, but also finding herself again, which I found really, really inspiring. Again, the chemistry off the charts, amazing. But unfortunately, 85% of the way in, it has one of my most hated tropes in it. Ugh, so annoying. I don't want to say what it is because it might spoil it, but you can probably gather what it is from like the tropes I've been talking about in this video. Annoying. So that kind of spoiled a lot of it for me. And the ending was so cheesy. Um, it also deals a lot with fame as well because the love interest is like a rock star. So some people are into that, some people are not. I personally loved that aspect of it. But yeah. I ended up giving this one a four stars because while I hated the ending, the rest of it was so good. So yeah, four stars. Okay, then we have Life's Too Short. This one is probably my least favorite out of all of her books. That being said, I still gave it a, what should I give it? 3.5 stars. This is about a YouTuber um, who's convinced that she's going to die young because all of the, her family members have died from this particular disease. I was just not as obsessed with this one. Like I was not hooked from the get go like the others. I didn't really vibe with the characters as much, but still it was good. It was fun, 3.5 stars but definitely my least favorite. Then we have a part of your world, which is book one in her next series. But again, recommend reading these before you go into these ones. This is about two characters who come from completely different lifestyles. One lives on a farm in the middle of nowhere and the other one is a emergency doctor. Very busy life, very like high society family, a family full of doctors. They look down on anyone who they think is less than they are. Um, very toxic family. This was the perfect book, except for one thing, <laughs> which tends to be the case um, with a lot of these books. And that is just a personal preference for me, is that the sex scenes in here were fade to black, which I don't like. I would prefer it to be more explicit. Um, so if it was more explicit, it would have been five stars for me. But I feel like in general, this series is a lot more spicy than this series. Um, but yeah, other than that, perfect book. Perfect book. So that one gets a 4.5. And then we have Yours Truly, which really holds a special place in my heart because of the anxiety representation in here. It's so good. We're following two doctors. They get off on the wrong foot because he has chronic social anxiety and sometimes he doesn't know how to interact with people properly and can often like rub people the wrong way so they get off on the wrong foot but things happen they start writing letters to each other which is so cute and they get to know each other through that and they fall in love and it's so wholesome and special we're also dealing with um a lot of family issues Bree's brother has kidney failure and if he doesn't get a donor they don't know what they're gonna do and just <laughs> It's just so beautiful. I can't remember why I gave this a 4.5 and not a 5. I'm assuming it has something to do with either A, miscommunication, or B, third act, third act breakup. So it's probably one of those, but I just can't remember. But other than that, perfect book. 4.5 stars. Then I read two Christina Lauren books, her two new, their, their two new releases. They are two people, Christina and Lauren. So first we have, what's it called? The Paradise Problem. I don't own a physical copy of this because I read it from the library and didn't love it. So I won't be purchasing a physical copy, but this one was okay. It was definitely one of my least favorite Christina Lawrence that I've read. I think I gave it like a four, but it's probably more of like a three or a 3.5. It really didn't leave a lasting impression on me. I really liked the female main character. She was really funny, but overall it, it was fun, but it just wasn't very memorable for me. Which is the complete opposite of their other book, Tangled Up In You. Oh my gosh! Five stars. Five freaking stars. This is obviously a Rapunzel retelling. This is the perfect romance book. Well, it's not perfect because again, I wanted spice and it doesn't have spice, which is annoying. But other than that, perfect book. I gave it five stars anyway because I was literally so obsessed, like kicking my feet, squealing, like screaming, like could not put this down, was so obsessed. So many amazing Tangled references, like Pascal, the fry pan, like everything was in here. It was perfect. The whole bar scene. Oh my god! I'm obsessed. So basically, we're following our main character, Ren, who's 
parents have hidden her away from the world her whole life. She's lived on this farm in the middle of nowhere. She's been homeschooled her whole life, but she convinces them um, to let her go off to college because she's just feeling like there's more out there to learn and discover and explore and she's ready for it. And there she meets this guy named Fitz and he has a questionable background but you can tell that he's like a really good person deep down. He just got into some trouble for some stuff previously. Anyway they end up going on a road trip together um, because in one of their classes they did a DNA test and Ren matched with this guy that said was her father and she's like that's impossible. My dad Steve is my dad. Anyway, she's determined to track this man down to find out what's really going on because the picture that came up looked exactly like her. So she's like, what is going on? My whole life is a lie. They go on a road trip together. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. It even has like this kind of like a th like mystery thrillery aspect towards the end. It is so good. Oh my gosh, five stars. Obsessed. Another romance that I was absolutely obsessed with is a novel a love story by Ashley Poston. Mm! The girlies that get it, get it, okay? Because I've seen a lot of like three star reviews for this book and I was so scared going into it but I ended up being absolutely obsessed. This is all about this woman who ends up in her favorite book series <laughs> and she's like what the heck how did I get here? She meets this guy who she doesn't remember from the book series. She's like that's weird. I know everything about this book series. I know every single character. I know the ins and outs. I know what everything's supposed to be blah 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 blah. Who the heck are you? Anyway they sort of form this bond relationship and she's trying to figure out who he is she's also trying to figure out how she's going to get home but she also ends up finding like lots of problems that she wants to fix in the town and help all these people and, oh, because the author of this book series died before being able to complete it so she's like oh all of these um open ends that she's trying to like solve for these characters and oh, it's so beautiful oh, so those are all the romance books there was a lot anyway moving on now we have YA that's not fantasy because I had a couple of YAs in there before. So first we have Far From the Tree by Robin Benway. This is a YA contemporary book about three siblings who were put up for adoption when they were babies and now that they are growing up, I think nearing the end of school, they find each other and decide to go on a quest to find their mother. This um, is such a beautiful story and it definitely hits a lot harder like now that I've had a kid because one of the siblings is pregnant herself and she's debating putting her baby up for adoption as well and it's just so emotional. This is definitely a beautiful YA contemporary, like it's one that I would definitely recommend because a lot of them are just like candy, you just like eat it and then forget about it but this one definitely has some merit to it. Um, it was beautiful, I gave it four stars. And then we have books two and three of the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series by Holly Jackson. This was so much fun. I don't typically read a lot of thrill, um, mystery thrillers, um, but honestly the YA ones that I've read like this and Truly Devious are so good. So good. And the audiobooks were absolutely phenomenal. This is essentially about a really smart high schooler who decides to try and solve a cold case. That's what the first book is about. And the story just sort of evolves from there. Um, it's so good, so fast paced, so fun, multimedia aspects, love the characters, absolutely adored the romance, love Ravi Singh, what a perfect little boy. Um, I ended up giving, book one got five stars, book two got four stars and book three got 4.5. Definitely went in a direction that I wasn't expecting which tends to be the case that I've seen in a lot of reviews but I personally really liked where it went. Oh, we're moving on to the bottom shelf now. Um, yeah, really enjoyed that series and I can't wait to read more of Holly Jackson's books. Okay, now we have some lit fic. So first we have a book that was sent to me by Text Publishing. This is Minor Detail by Adania Shibley. Oh my gosh. Um, I've talked about this a couple of times, definitely in my media book freakout tag, but this is such an important read, especially right now with the genocide in Palestine happening. But this is essentially set in two timelines. We're following a disturbing crime that takes place a year after the Nakba. And then in the present day, we're following a woman who lives in Palestine who discovers this crime. And she's discovering that there's a lot of parallels to her own life. So she's sort of following the threads of what really happened um, with this crime that happened. Sorry if you can hear my dog dreaming in the background. Anyway, this is absolutely 
haunting, beautiful, really packs a punch for the short amount of pages that it is. Highly recommend, five stars. You will not regret reading this, guaranteed. Then we have Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. This one, I was kind of expecting not to love it and I was right. Uh, we're following our main character Keiko, who's 36. She works the same convenience store job that she has worked in for a million years. And everyone's saying to her like, what are you doing with your life? Like, are you happy just working in a convenience store for your whole life? Being unmarried, like you're wasting your life. But she, she's very autistic coded, but she is so happy <laughs> with her daily life. She's got her routine down pat, just she's nailed everything. Everything is the way it's supposed to be. Um, and it's just sort of following her journey, discovering what she really wants in life. And yeah, it was fine. I gave it a three. It's definitely more of like a slice of life type of story, which I've learned is not really for me. I need a strong plot to get me through most of the time. This had some great messages and great takeaways, um, but it was okay. I gave it three. Then we have I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Hartman. What a little book with a big story inside. This is a dystopian story about this girl. All she's ever known is being locked in this underground cage with 39 other women and they are constantly guarded by these men. She doesn't know why she's there, she doesn't know how she got there, she doesn't know what the world used to be like. However, the 39 other women who are significantly older than her do remember what it used to be like. They are a little bit hazy on how they got to this point, but they don't know what happened either. One day, a blaring alarm goes off, and miraculously, right before this alarm goes off, one of the guards had the keys already turned in the lock. So he makes a split-second decision to leave the keys in there and run. So all the guards are gone. So these women are suddenly faced with their freedom, but they don't know what has become of the world, they don't know where they are, they don't know if there's any other survivors. <sighs> it's a lot. Um, I originally rated this a 4.5 simply because you do not get any answers in this book, which really frustrates me personally. I'm the type of person who needs answers, but I think I am going to bump this up to a 5 because I can't stop thinking about it. It is so haunting that we don't get complete understanding of what's going on, but the journey itself was so thrilling and so bleak but so interesting so yeah i think i'm gonna give it a five the one thing i do recommend is if you're reading this do not read the forward introduction before you go in because it will spoil some things in the book and that happened to me and i was really pissed so yeah i think i'm gonna give this a five i think very thought provoking okay moving on to comics and graphic novels so first we have everything is okay this is sort of a collection of little slice of life comics about the author going through some mental health issues mainly depression and anxiety i thought it was super relatable i loved the art style um yeah, I thought it was really good. I gave it a four. Then I read the most adorable little graphic novel duology. I read Garlic and the Vampire and Garlic and the Witch. This is all about this tiny little garlic person who has severe anxiety. And one day they learn that a vampire has come to live in the castle in the forest. Because garlic is garlic and vampires don't like garlic. They decide that garlic would be the perfect person to go and check it out. And like, garlic is so scared. But they do it anyway and that's the definition of being brave isn't it i thought the first volume was so cute and wholesome i gave it five stars i didn't love the second one as much but it was still really cute i gave it a four but yeah i highly recommend these are so cute guys then we have if you'll have me by uni this is a ya um romance graphic novel it's sapphic and super super adorable. It's basically about these two girls in college. It's so cute, so sweet, so wholesome, highly recommend, has excellent representation and lots of just great nuggets of wisdom. I loved it. I gave it a five. Then I read the first three installments in the Lightful series by Tim Probert. So we've got number one and two and then I own number three. This is so good and so underrated. It's a middle grade fantasy series. It's all about this young girl who has anxiety. 
I love. And she basically figures out that she's the one who has to save the world. Um, she meets numerous amazing characters and creatures along the way. It's, there's such depth to this world and this story. It's just so good and so wholesome and I'm just absolutely obsessed. I can't wait until the next volume comes out. Sorry my glasses keep fogging up. That happens when I get hot um, and I'm hot. So. so I gave volume one five stars, volume two 4.5 and volume three five stars. Okay moving on to middle grade and picture books. I don't think I'm gonna go into the picture books because I feel like no one really cares. We'll just go through a couple that I think might be interesting to you. The first one is this Taylor Swift Little People Big Dreams book. Um, five stars because I am trash for this woman. It's so cute. Absolutely love it. Love the illustrations. Um, I also read the second Babysitter's Club book. This is Claudia and the Phantom Phone Calls. This was really fun. Um, loving a trip down memory lane. I also read Scar Town by Tristan Banks, which won one of the CBCAs this year. It's a middle grade, like upper middle grade, like mystery I would say um and that was pretty good I gave it a three but other than that I don't know if you're really interested you can check out my goodreads but I feel like none of you are here for that so those are the 47 books that I read this winter thank you so much for joining me on my reading journey this winter and I shall see you with a new video very soon goodbye <laughs>